Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Bat Property Solutions. We're in upstate New York. Um, yeah, continue. Yeah, you, Go know, ahead. you know where you are. Good. Uh, we hope you guys are having a great weekend. We've got uh, Bini. Bini and the gay. Yeah. Hani Brahan. And it's me, Michael Abata. And today, we wanted to bring back a topic that we've talked about in the past. And uh, it involved how you build up your team. And while it's great to build a team around you, it's also important to remember that those team members aren't, they don't have to be there forever. Like, as in, if they are not sticking to their um, part of the role in the growth of your company, then you have to change and adjust in order to find the right people to do this. And that comes in with setting the expectations that you have for your team and, and then the, the people around you. We've learned this through the several projects that we've done where we were um, eager to hold on to certain people longer than necessary and both parties in, the, in those circumstances ended up suffering. So since then, we've made an effort to uh, adjust our team and bring in team members that are willing to stand up and, and work to the same uh, level that we want to work at. Yeah, you know, by not following these systems and uh, not applying these, uh, I guess, procedures um, can cause a lot of headaches, um, pain, and not uh, loss of time and money uh, into the project uh, that you're working in. Case in point, we had projects where we did not follow these systems um, and it caused us to either let go of the contractors multiple contractors. Yeah, we actually fired two in the end. Yeah, we had to let go of two, which cost us money and time. Time is money. Time is everything. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of headaches. It delayed the project. Um, and the... See, you can't hold the contractor... If you don't set expectation in, up front, you know, you can't hold the contractor um, accountable for um, his or her mistake. Um, and if you do, you know, usually it's very harsh where it's not a win-win situation, you know, for both for both parties and which is not in a situation that you want to be in. So, yeah, that, that you know, it, it hurt our profits. Uh, we lost money, uh, but it, uh, it was a good learning lesson that um, we knew that on, on our next project, uh, we learned. It was a good learning lesson and, and we applied it in our, in our most recent project in, yeah. So, Massachusetts. yeah, so I mean, uh, up front, what we try to do uh, in projects going forward is uh, always have as a detail of a scope of work that as you can. Um, so going down to the nitty gritty, gritty of uh, making sure that you spell out everything to the detail. So nothing everything. is, uh, bolts, no, nothing is left for guessing. Use, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that helped going down to the exact color number not just saying gray but it's actually spelling out the brand the color number uh, spelling all that out that where, helps where, yeah where to get it and all that stuff and this is before the start of the project so you don't figure this out as yeah. the project goes along it's set in advance so that there is really no question no guesswork, yeah, no guesswork going really on. so by doing that it helps the project run much smoother um, and also when it's done it's you get you definitely could account people uh, to, to what to their to their end of the bargain right to make sure what was said was done and therefore you could um, in the end part ways and have a successful project along with that also to make sure that you have your payment plan uh, schedule you know set in time so that you know what needs to be paid at what time and also sticking to that and holding yourself accountable to that as well because just as the contractor is responsible for doing the work you're also responsible for paying on time if not, you know, uh, otherwise people will be disappointed. And that's also a bad situation to and be in. Not only that, I mean, you know, we love paying contractors if, if the work is done on time or, or ahead of schedule, right? And so, yes, there should be penalties in your contract. There should be penalties when, um, when there's delay in work, you know, in your schedule. If they've delayed it, there should be penalty. But at the same time, you should, you should also uh, enforce positive... Um, Reinforcement yeah, rewards. Rewards where, you know, if you do it ahead of schedule, properly, obviously, if you do it ahead of schedule, then 
um, there'll be a reward at the end, you know, uh, an extra, I don't know. A bonus of some a bonus sort. bonus of yeah. some sort, yeah. So um, that way, you know, it's, it's a win-win situation for, for, for both teams again. And, um, but yeah, but all that needs to be done ahead of time. Is it a lot of work? Yes. So, you know, to detail everything and, to bring all, you know, to lay out the schedule and what materials you want and type of finishes. To lay that all out takes a lot of time, yeah. but it's so it's so worth it because it gets the project run so smoothly and with less headache, and that creates a system where you can apply on other projects yeah. over and over and over again. And and that's a key there where you could you know once you have that scope of work, unless you deviate a lot and you know the projects are very different from one to the other, but usually if they are if they are within the same type of style of home, homes you're buying or the same style, like condos, if you just buy condos and they're roughly the same size, usually you could carry over your same scope of work from project to project. And that's the good thing about having these, these systems. And actually, if you actually even have different styles of projects, you could have systems for condos, systems for single families, sing, uh, systems for multi-families. Uh, at the end of the day, you do need to track your systems and just make sure it's documented so that you could reuse them and therefore it's not a burden as you start you know, new projects. So set your expectations, take time to build out your detailed scope of work, explain all of these things to your team in advance so it's all clear going forward and everybody's on the same page, have everybody read the, the fine print initial, make sure everybody's you know willing to step up to the plate in the same way and grow as a company. And when you have a team like this, it's great when you don't, Find somebody else that'll step in. They'll, there's always somebody else who is willing to um, raise their level of work um, at the same time as, as, as you are. So uh, yeah. don't think teams are, are fixed situations. They're adaptable. And uh, we hope you guys find some good people to help you run your projects. Uh, if you have any questions, hit us up. Uh, reach out to us on, on Facebook, on YouTube, um, on Instagram. And uh, we'd love to hear about some of the issues that you guys have had. And uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, uh, please make sure you uh, share uh, this on um, Facebook, comment, like our page. Yep. Uh, we appreciate your feedback. And if you're interested in rentals in Massachusetts, we have uh, several listings that are coming up. So be sure to reach out. Uh, the project that is almost complete in Chelsea, Massachusetts is going to be done hopefully in the next couple of weeks. We're just like doing some small finishes now. So stick. Yeah, stay tuned stay for that. Stay tuned and, and you hear about out. that in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot us a message. But with that, we're going to go back out for a little bit more hiking or, or maybe skiing. No, <laughs> no, no. no skiing. <laughs> um, but we'll have, uh, enjoy the rest of the, your weekend and have a good week. Talk to you soon, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.